aggression. At times, war in order to defend or to keep safe. And too often, wars of aggression are, um, are tried. We, we attempt to justify them by saying it's a defensive thing. And I think that's part of what's happening today by Russia in relation to Ukraine. And I guess I want to start worship today just saying there are good Christians who are Russian Christians. There are good Christians who are Ukrainian Christians. And there are good Christians, Americans, and everywhere. And everywhere where there's war. And um, part of the challenge this morning with the message, with the scripture, with the songs, with the prayers, with everything, the music, all of it, is to find God, to listen for God, to listen again for God's call. That's the heart of the scripture. Even at times of such tragedy, of such criminality, of murder, of bombing hospitals and schools, and opening ways of, of um, escape, and then, then shelling them, killing those trying to get to safety. And we're called yet to be Christians in that. We're called to be faithful followers of Jesus in that. And we hope and we pray that reminders such as a beautiful stole, a ribbon, hats. Would you make a love offering at the altar if you want a hat? It's OK to have a hat. <laughs> we want to share them. But if it's possible for you to make a love offering, any offering that ends up on the altar table today, or if you make one on, with a check or cash in those special offering envelopes on the tables, they'll go through the United Methodist Committee on Relief for Ukrainian refugee help and general relief through the United Methodist Church, 100% of your offering. Um, that's probably enough of that. Um, we struggle, and yet we will maintain our Christian witness in the midst of war. The scripture today is about God calling. So be mindful of times you think maybe God has spoken to you. I'll talk with the young people in a little bit about times I think God has spoken to me and maybe what you think about God speaking to you. Everyone here, everyone at a distance, everyone not involved in worship here, God speaks. God speaks to you. God speaks to us personally. The challenge is being open and then having others hopefully help us understand our God who calls. So with all that, let's join our hearts in prayer, and we'll enter into worship. Oh God, we're so thankful that you are faithful, that you are righteous and just. You are mighty, especially in the times when we struggle to see your presence, when we struggle in the face of evil so clearly in this world, when we struggle with the brokenness and the sinfulness in each of us, my own brokenness. I wonder why you don't change it, why you don't make your will come. Why do you ask us to be a part of that, broken as we are? Help us in once more to the power of your scripture, the power not just of words on a page, but of your living word, the one in whom we put our trust, Jesus Christ, that we might listen well once again and not just hear your word, but take it in and allow it to transform us that we might take it forth to transform the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll start our, our singing today with Isaiah's response. So if you, if you open up the book of Isaiah and hear what Isaiah said when God called, this is what he said. So let's rise and sing together.
Amen. And let it, we'll, we'll work to do that. Please be seated. And would any young people to join me come now? We don't have a huge crowd. I've got a hat for each of you if you want one. And you can either keep it or you can give it to someone you know who might appreciate it. Come on down. You're the next contestant. Hey, thanks for coming. So first, I just want to say thanks to a good friend who knitted these by hand, 23 of them here, but others. Would you like a hat? You don't have to make a special offering. Grown-ups do. But I'll even, I'll even give one, two, three, four. Ready? Julie Kane, you get one. And I'll make an offering for them. Thank you for uh, sharing. We have Ukrainian brothers and sisters, family in Christ we're praying for. There's a war over there, and it's horrible. Um, the scripture today is not about that. The scripture today is about God speaking to us. So I wanted to tell you about when I became a pastor, a question that was asked me. And one of the things you have to do when you become a pastor, like other jobs, some of them, you have to get a psychological evaluation. Uh -oh. So when Julie goes along and you know is going through all the tests and things like that, you gotta pass the test and you preach some and get reviewed on your preaching and then do some pastoral care and that. And some of this is like that, but this is not a test. This is, <laughs> this is fun work. Um, they ask you a question on the psychological evaluation. Anyone ever had to do one of these? <laughs> and I, actually, I, I need to look down because there's all sorts of reasons we might get these evaluations and that's good. One of the questions is, do you ever hear voices that other people don't usually hear? How would you answer that question if, if you knew you, you wanted to pass that psych evaluation? Do you ever hear voices that other people don't usually hear? What? You have your own thoughts? That's a voice that, yeah, so you have yours that I wouldn't hear. That's a great, that's a wonderful. Do you ever hear voices that other people don't hear? You ever hear some? <laughs> the scripture today, I'm not going to tell you it yet, but it's about someone who heard a voice, and it wasn't a voice that, that other people heard, and it turns out it was God's voice. So I, I don't remember because it's been so many years exactly how I answered that. I think I answered it by saying no, because I thought they'd think I was crazy if I said I heard voices that no one else heard. But it turned out okay, they allowed me to become a pastor. The psychology review person did that. How do you think, in addition to your thoughts, which is a really neat idea about how God might speak to us, what are some other ways God might speak to you and to me? Whether you're young, whether you're old, <laughs> how does God speak? Do you remember any Bible stories about how God spoke? Did Jesus say anything about that? And we'll broaden it. How, did, how might God speak to us? Through a burning bush. Through a burning bush. Who did, so you can't answer back behind me now, but who did God speak to through a burning bush? Anybody remember that Bible story? Someone having something to do with sheep. Moses was tending the sheep. Yeah, and, and God spoke this bush burned but was not consumed. What's some other one? Someone in front of me? Oh, through angels. In your heart. You feel it in your heart, which is similar to thoughts, but not the exact same thing. There's someone over this way. Oh, through a rainbow. Nature. All of creation could be God speaking to us. Birds, plants. I keep waiting on these warm days. We hadn't had them for a few days for some plants to actually start growing. I'm one of those. Through family, maybe? Animals. Animals? Oh, interesting. Yeah. St. Francis was one of those saints that's a patron saint of animals. And God speaks. Yeah, one other? Through the Holy Spirit, far beyond us, but within us and around us. Maybe related to our thoughts, certainly related to nature. All these are, are interesting ways. It, creativity, we're going to have praying with paint. Maybe some of you are going to be involved in it after worship. God can speak to us through paint. <laughs> and all sorts of ways. There's no end of the ways God can speak to us. It happened to be at nighttime, in the scripture story we'll, we'll share about. It happened to be to a young person. That's why I thought it was especially neat to share with you. God did not, in this story, speak directly to an older person. And I thought, what a special thing for you. Sometimes God speaks to you, and we older folks need to listen 
when you share with us about what God said to you. So God speaks, and God speaks to you, you, you. <laughs> God speaks to me. And let's pray that God help us listen. So please pray with me, then you can go to Sunday school. Dear God, thank you for speaking and blessing us to hear. Help us not just to listen, but to do what you say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. And I wanted to share with you, too, for each of you. I don't know if I've got plenty of these. Another friend who wanted to remain anonymous made yellow and blue ribbons. And I think it's, I only have three left because I gave a few away. And it's okay. So we'll go by age. Who's youngest? See, would you want one? There are four. There's not just three. Would you like a yellow and blue ribbon? And you can either keep it for you or give it to someone that you'd like to give it to. Yeah. Who's next youngest? No one has one. And maybe we'll figure it out. So Lily, would you like one? And actually you can choose. And then we'll own. And y'all can go to Sunday school. Care for one? Yep. There and sir, for you. Thank you. Thank you, angels of the church. This may be a good time for me to give a thanks for uh, all of you, because I received a birthday card this past week. I, I got a little older this week, and I received a card from all of you. <laughs> God spoke a message of grace and of care, and, uh, and I'm so grateful for that. Thank you for, for blessing me. I'm looking, and I see Mary as our scripture reader, and I'm not seeing Mary this morning, so maybe I'll... I got you covered if you want. Would you? Have you got it right there, or do you need one? I'm you good. got it. Thank you, Kenneth. Come on down. This is the story of Samuel and Eli. In the Old Testament, the first book of Samuel... Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and he said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Go lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And he got up, and he went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you've called me. And then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. And therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go. Lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came, and he stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Kenneth, thank you. Samuel was Hannah's child, and it didn't look like Hannah would be able to have a child. And here came this baby, and it was great news. And I'm drastically shortening the story. And she dedicated her child, Samuel, and, um, to be a Nazirite. You can study that one. <laughs> that doesn't mean a person from, from Nazareth. Um, and took him to be with Eli, who would be an elder in relation to him and help raise him. Um, 
Eli was a prophet, was a, um, a leader at the time. And as you heard in the story, Samuel was, was to learn, and Samuel actually learned to listen for God's voice because this, this call that came three times and just didn't really, it didn't sink in. Samuel was sure that Eli was calling him. Maybe when you say things to me, it's God talking through you, and I just think it's you. <laughs> Lord, help me, maybe it's even God speaking through me sometimes. We've got to be real careful, we who stand in pulpits and have people looking at us, presuming that God's speaking through us. Um, sometimes it takes multiple tries for God to get through to the point where you and I have a sense, it's, it's God, that's, that's God's voice. There are a lot of preachers, a lot of pastors, a lot of people in general who, who would bear witness to that. Oh, yeah, God had to hit me with a two-by-four to get me to realize yep. thus and such. The reason I came back to church is because God spoke to me through thus and such. The reason my life got transformed and I don't handle money or alcohol or whatever or relationships or differently is because I finally listened when God called. We're jumping around in the scriptures in what to me is a kind of fun way. It may feel to you like we're, we're doing too much jumping. We were in Isaiah, we're jumping back, and we're going to go into the New Testament some, so it's not a consistent reading of the Scripture. The reason for that is I'm preaching, Julie and I will be preaching, from the, the Sunday Scriptures in our, um, our Lenten study, Walter Brueggemann's A Way Other Than Our Own. And there are these brief little two-page devotions, but there's depth and power in them. And I'll try each one that I have to share a little bit of what Brueggemann is sharing, but to share more of my own thoughts and my own reflections and in hopes that it'll grow into our reflections of what is it this Lenten journey of 40 days is leading us as Christ Church to journey not just 40 days, but forth from it, listening to this God who sometimes needs to speak again and again and again the same thing. Brueggemann says, Night is a time when we cannot see. Think about what it's like for you at nighttime, when it's dark, when it's late, and maybe a light's on, but it's not bright. Night is what we cannot control. Night is when children are frightened. The shadows seem more lively. Night is when things are unclear, literally. Often things are beyond explanation. Night is when we're, we can be terrorized, terrified. So we have bright lights all around to fend off the darkness. Night is when even adults are sometimes out of control. We are visited by our past. We're visited by our future. We dream and sometimes have nightmares. The night is a liminal time, he says. <laughs> Walter Brueggemann is a scholar epistemologically showed up twice in one of the readings last week, two weeks ago. <laughs> I had to look that one up, and I'm supposed to know what epistemologically means. <laughs> Liminal is another word like that. It means, it means threshold. Nighttime is a threshold time, which in relation to God speaking means we're on one side, God's on the other, and will I be open? Will I cross that threshold when God speaks? Will I be open to it? Is it possible for God, certainly, to cross that threshold and meet me where I am in the midst of my sleep, my fear, my doubt, my bewilderment, my uncertainty about my life right now? It was night when, when God spoke to Samuel. I feel like just asking, you don't have to raise your hand at all, but have you ever felt like God really spoke a clear word to you? And I mean you at a distance, too. Have you ever felt God really was trying to get through to you? And maybe you even heard a literal word or phrase or something. It amazes me how often in conversation with people someone will share. It's an absolute privilege of being a pastor because you get into conversations like this. And don't feel bad if you haven't had that happen. Mother Teresa, of all people, said she went through decades of times. She wondered if God would speak to her again. Think of the thresholds in our lives. 
It's been said, and I, I've been, um, I ought to just lay this out as a confession. I've been fixated at times. I'll get into stuff about what's going on in Ukraine. And I just want to see details. And it's not helping me at all. I want to know what the latest is. Is that going to help me pastor at all? Will I be a better dad or husband or human being? And I need to know. I need to be aware generally. But boy, and again and again, I, I read a threshold has been crossed. You know, a border is a threshold. Running military right over a border, that's a threshold. A threshold has been passed. And it seems thresholds keep getting passed and passed and passed. Birth is a threshold. Death is a threshold. There's these thresholds in our lives. Marriage, other relationships. There's the before, there's the, and then threshold, the liminal. And then what comes after? Some of you are aware, I've shared with you I was away visiting my uncle. We're at a threshold as a family. It's time for him to move so he can be cared for better and not live on his own. Have you ever had to wrestle with that? Try to love someone into the next step? And it's a threshold because who wants to go to assisted living? It's a step from a nursing home, isn't it? It's a threshold as a family we're working on. Have you thought of COVID as a threshold? I keep wondering, is there ever going to be a threshold out of it? And it was almost two years ago. I remember it was my birthday yesterday. I'm not, I'm not asking you to sing or anything. But it was March 12th, 2020, when I remember everything shutting down in my previous pastoral work. No more meetings in, in person. No more going to churches. No more getting together. Do you remember that threshold? When God speaks is a threshold time. And it may not be that for you it's like it was for Samuel and Eli. Maybe God will speak and you'll just catch it the first time. I'm not that way. <laughs> I'm a little slow. Maybe it's a long and drawn out threshold like COVID. Who knows this threshold of war? Who knows what God's speaking in the midst of all of it? Is it possible for the peace of Christ, which passes our understanding, to speak a louder and more powerful, for the spirit to come beyond our capacity to understand, to transform those who are at war? Not to just transform those defending themselves that others could plow over them, but to transform the hearts of those who say they're Christian that war might cease. I guess for our purposes, individually and together as Christ Church, I want you to think, and I want you to help me think, and I want us to think and pray about the thresholds where we are. I'm not wearing a mask now because they're optional, and when I'm at the microphone, I won't, but I tend to wear it when I'm not. There's a degree to which we're moving beyond COVID, a degree, we're having praying with paint afterward. You'll hear our, is it properly a dulcimer choir? What do we, do we have a name? Orchestra, not dulcimers. Yet. Not yet. Six dulcimers are gonna offer the postlude. We're getting together some in ways that we hadn't. We're walking at one o'clock. You'll hear more things and you'll have ideas for how we can be together. We're called to be the church in ways that we hadn't been able to. And friends, family and Christ, I've never known you without COVID. I'm so ready to be church in other ways. What's God calling us to do and be in the midst of all these thresholds? God is not calling us to be the same. I mean, is God? <laughs> At times I used to say, man, when we get back to normal, what is normal? Do we want to get back to what normal was two years, two years and a week or a month ago? Maybe in some ways. We don't want to let go of the good that we've been and we've had. And again, I don't know that. I wasn't here with you for that. But God is calling us just as God called Samuel. And I guess I want to give you a, a warning. Um, and I want to hear the warning from the scripture as well as the good news of, of God speaking at these threshold moments when you're sleeping coming in a dream or speaking out loud and you're wondering, am I going crazy? And if I had to take a psyche vow and be honest, <laughs> what would they think about me? Or if God speaks to you through a loved one or through a child at church or through someone you meet who is 
stranger previously because you went on a walk with him around town. Maybe you'll be blessed like Samuel was to have an elder in faith or maybe a younger someone in faith say, or realize themselves, oh, it's not me, it's God. How do I help you listen to God? And when you help someone or someone helps you, they may not use these words like Eli did with Samuel. It's the Lord. So go lie down, and if God calls you again, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So if God, if you're blessed, or maybe terrified, or wherever in between, to hear God calling you, I pray, and you tell me, Rich, pray, ask, God, speak, your servant's listening. Maybe God will continue to speak, and here's the warning that comes with the blessing. I guess I'll just say, read the rest of chapter 3. It's like a lot of the prophets. They were given a word to share or given a job to do. That's not one that many of us would envy. It was not a happy word he was told to share. But he did, and he did it as faithfully as he could. And God was with him, and God blessed him. And I trust that as we go about our listening, as you help me, as I help you, not just individually, but as Christ church, we'll hear God calling us to be and become whatever it is we're going to be and become, in and through and far beyond every threshold, even the horrible ones we're in. That we'll bear a word like Samuel did back then that transformed his time. You and I might be able to do the same thing. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing. What are we going to sing? 508. What, what's this one? This is faith while trees are still in blossom. Sometimes we don't see the fruits of what we're called to prepare for. If you're wondering how God's going to bear fruit in your situation, if you're wondering how good will come out of challenge, this may be a song for you. Please rise. be seated. Lord, send me. This time we are celebrating and welcoming all of the gifts that all of us offer to God every day. We have so many gifts, including monetary gifts, that we could send to UMCOR for our global relief. There's so many ways that we can share God's love with one another, including painting and book studies that we're doing. And I welcome all of you today to join us on the walk to support Ukraine. Sometimes 
it's hard during these times where we feel hopeless and we can't see the light. But that's why we're here for one another, to remind one another that Christ is our light and that light never dies, never goes out. Another way that Pastor Rich and I are going to invite you is to work for the Open Door Mission, um, to work for Code Blue, and to help those in our community that are in need. So we thank you ahead of time. Be looking for that in uh, probably the beginning of April. Uh, we will be letting you know of a time where you can serve our community in that way as well. Please pray with me. God, you grace us with so many gifts. Sometimes, Lord, we don't know how to listen for you. Sometimes we can't see beyond what's happening. We can't see how we could possibly help. But Lord, you know that even the one older woman who gave her last coin, that love, that giving, that true giving is what transforms the world. Lord, you call us into sharing those blessings, into upholding and uplifting one another. And we thank you. God, may these gifts uplift us. May these gifts uplift the hearts and the needs of all of those around the world. God, we thank you for UMCOR. We thank you that we stand in hope and light while others can't see it. Amen. We have so many prayers this morning. My heart is heavy for the people of Ukraine. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, before all that, uh, obviously this is heavy on my heart, so <laughs> very eager to share that. But um, before that, let us, let us hear a beautiful anthem from our choir. Lord, who threw out these 40 days. Thank you. Sometimes it's only, it's just uh, music for me that can bring me peace um, during these times where I feel helpless. I don't, I don't know how, 
how to handle some of these things that are going on in the world. And with you, I feel that pain. And through Christ, we walk through it together. Through these 40 days, we walk with Christ as he made his way, his journey to the cross. Please pray with me. Lord, it's hard to imagine that in our darkness sometimes that you are there. It's hard to hear you sometimes through the chaos, through the violence. It's hard to have hope, God, sometimes when we've been waiting and waiting and waiting But Lord, we do trust you and we know that you are there through all of it. We know that sometimes you're waiting for us to just stop and listen. To stop and feel the stirring of our heart. To do what we can do, whether it's huge, whether it's a huge donation of money to help with relief, whether it's wearing a ribbon to remind us that we are one world, we are one human family in Christ. God, we pray that you will lift up and hold the hearts of all of those that are suffering this morning through daily difficulties all the way to the difficulties of war. God, we lift up Valerie's mother, who was in the hospital, Penny Sheik, who's feeling under the weather. We pray for Lynn, who's been traveling, our family sister in Christ, Lynn, who's been traveling all over this country to care for those, to, to be the feet, to be the hands of Christ, to care for those that are in need. God, we pray for peace, for Daniel, for Sadie, for April, that they will continue to see your light and your hope. God, together we are so much stronger than we are alone. We know that together we can pour our prayers into each other, even as we paint as we play music, as we sing, you are with us. Your spirit of love and hope courses through our veins. And we are here for one another. As we walk towards your light with you during this Lenten season. God, let us be the light that you shine in our world every day. Let us hold your hope. Let us continue to support one another in the ways that you call us to. And we pray as you taught us so long ago. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit as you will, and we are going to sing 2130, The Summons. Let my name be. 
go this week shining your light, listening for the words, for the feelings, for the stirrings of Christ in your heart, in your minds, in your souls. Share your gifts with others in need. Join us today on the walk at Beth Tem uh, Temple Bethel at one o'clock. We'll be walking for Ukraine. After service at 1145, if any of you are interested, we still have a few more spots open to paint sunflowers as we pray through each stroke, as we pray for those people who are suffering in Ukraine right now. We also pray for all of those who are also fighting, that don't want to be fighting for the hearts of our enemies that also are suffering this day. God, bring us peace. Go in peace and share your gifts with everyone you meet. Amen. and when 